Now let's get into the headlines now in Nigeria, see what uh, the papers are, are talking about this morning. All the headlines making uh, the uh, uh, jostling for the attention of readers this morning. I have with me in the studio public affairs analyst and the lawyer, Gide Ologun, as well as journalist Dari Odufowokon. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Nice Mike. to see you both. <laughs> Great. You. Let's start from Daily Trust. Daily Trust newspaper is where we start from this morning. And he's saying on 2023, I'll stop desperate politicians. President Muhammad Buhari is quoted as saying this. And what president should do to succeed? Experts are giving their own uh, advice there. That's what you see on Daily Trust. Uh, let's move to Daily Times. A Daily Times newspaper this morning says, Senate kicks against Buhari's directive on free visa for Africans and uh, summons uh, Minister of Interior, Immigration Boss and asks uh, AGF to forward uh, all treaties agreements entered into by federal government to National Assembly for ratification. All right, I guess my guests will be interested in, in talking about this as we get along. Now, Blueprint is where we go next. Now, Blueprint newspaper says, Buhari announces fresh three-year borrowing plan, signs a 2020 budget on 7th, 7th birthday, orders MDAs on strict implementation, and warns against uh, name dropping ahead of 2023. Okay, that's uh, the blueprint. News Direct is next now, and he says federal government prepares policies for two oil bid rounds in 2020. Okay, two oil bid rounds in 2020. Okay, uh, gentlemen, uh, uh, the news, the story on the front page of the Daily Times might interest you because uh, this has been making a lot of buzz. The president of uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, the president of Angola, the president of, uh, I think, Tanzania have all commended Nigeria when the president uh, in Egypt announced that uh, from 2020, uh, that uh, it's going to be visa on arrival for all Africans coming into Nigeria. But the Senate is now saying, no, it can't just work like that. It's not a bad policy if you have to look at it, but a lot has to go into considering and putting that on board. Uh, I wonder how you, this comes to you. Daryl, let me start with you on this. Yeah, well, uh, I, I quite agree with the Senate on their argument, not necessarily the position. But the argument that if it must uh, come to be, there are procedures. I think uh, President Mahadu Buhari really needs to understand that sometimes good decisions also require proper planning, proper analysis. The purpose and essence of having uh, a national assembly is for that arm of government to help the executive in ensuring that what has to be done, will be done well. The president was in Egypt. He saw the need to further contribute to the integration. To the African Brotherhood, maybe. Of the African <laughs> Brotherhood. And he felt, yeah, we are the big brother. Let's make our doors open. And on impulse, I would say, he announced it there and then. Back home. Nigerians received the news. Stakeholders went into analyzing the pros and cons of what has been said. The implications, the good sides and the bad sides. From that point, things he didn't find enough time to consider came up and the National Assembly being a body of elected representatives uh, must have, before making their own announcement, they must have hmm. discussed this and realized that there are some gray areas. So, Mr. President, come, let us look at this together. If we are shutting our borders for goods and we are throwing it open <laughs> for people, should is it find a way of marrying okay. these two policies? All right. So I, I think uh, <laughs> the National Assembly right. is, is on the right track. Okay. Yeah, uh, is this for discussion? Jide, let me come to you on this. You are the lawyer in here. When it comes to the legal framework, certainly 
the the issue of visa on arrival mm. is not is not like giving grants and aid to any other African country mm. and say okay fine we will support IDPs or refugees in your country mm. or we're going to assist you with this amount. It, it's it's a whole lot of process that requires a lot of planning and thinking and and, and all of that before an announcement. Do, do, I don't think maybe that was considered. Now that the National Assembly is coming up with, uh, with this, what, what would it take actually to have that? Interestingly, mm. we have the policy in place already. Okay. The visa on arrival. Oh, we have the policy exactly, in place? But for high-profile investors oh, yes. who are coming to add value in Nigeria. To do business. But the recent one my president just mm. announced is like a poor man with his family of seven, for instance, struggling to feed and pay school fees and going out there uh, to tell the neighbors that you can send your children for school fees, you can come and spend holidays with us, feel free. You know, on getting back home, your wife must call you aside. Uh, that did you, <laughs> have you suddenly <laughs> you a <laughs> hit a jackpot somewhere? <laughs> because even though Nigeria has been classified as the headquarters of poverty, there are some very poor countries around us, obviously. And opening your gates to them, some of them are already coming in. And by the way, already we have the population crisis. There are foreigners who have invaded this nation. The governor of Lagos State complained recently. There are many people in Lagos now. They don't have where to live. They live under the bridge and everywhere. All right. We have not finished with that. And don't forget that the e-registration is on for immigrants in Nigeria who will be Nigerianized. And they are not high quality HR materials. Hmm. So are they going to constitute value to the society or threat to the society? And we are talking about All these have to be considered. Exactly. Okay. And again, I'm confused here. On one side, we have shut the borders hmm. like uh, <laughs> that, 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 is, that is for business <laughs> coming in. Co coming in. See, and so, and but the other one in, are for in, visitors in, who in want to come and spend money. Hmm. I think we decided to pattern our democracy after that of the USA. The president of USA right now, Donald Trump, mm. is fighting hard to sanitize the immigration crisis in the US. And here we are. We are opening ourselves up to further immigrant invasion. Mm. And I, I, I must appreciate the National Assembly. And again, we must realize that we have three arms of government. Okay. And 109 senators represent us. 360 House of Rest members represent us. Mm. I think they should consider okay. the value for Nigeria and look at the future. And all the implications nation. that go along it. Okay. Uh, I must thank you both for your insight. This is going to be a debate that will go ahead so long as uh, it, it keeps uh, ringing out there. Thank you very much, Gideon for coming on the program. Dario, for welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having right. us. Now let's head into the papers now, see what uh, the headlines are uh, this morning. I have still I have with me in the studio lawyer, uh, public affairs analyst Gide Ologun and uh, journalist Dario Dufawoko. Gentlemen, nice to see you. Okay, now Daily Trust, uh, let's start from uh, Daily Trust newspaper now, 2023. I'll stop disparate politicians. Uh, President Buhari is saying this. What president should do to succeed, experts are saying. Now, a lot of people have been talking about uh, 2023, uh, which is still very, very far away, very, very far away. But in political terms, some will say it's really close. From there, let's go to Daily Times. Daily Times says, Senate kicks against Buhari's directive on free visa for Africans and someone's Minister of Interior, Immigration Boss, asks AGF to... Uh, forward all treaties, agreements entered into by federal government to National Assembly for ratification. All right, now from there, let's go to the blueprint. The blueprint says, uh, uh, as uh, state, as Senate begins a consideration of the $30 billion loan request, Buhari announces fresh three-year borrowing plan and signs a 2020 budget on 77th birthday and orders MDAs on strict implementation and warns against name dropping ahead of 2023. All right, I guess my, my guests in the studio will be interested in this uh, long borrowing plan. From there, let's go to the News Direct, uh, which is the last uh, paper we'll be looking at this morning. Now, federal government prepares policy for two oil bid rounds in 2020. Okay, now gentlemen, the story on the blueprint, borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. 
Now, the $30 billion borrowing uh, request from the federal government has been there since the uh, Eighth Senate. It wasn't uh, uh, given approval, and now it has resurfaced again. But the National Assembly, especially the Senate, has said, you know what, we're going to you know, give this approval for the federal government to uh, go ahead and borrow. That the president has given, especially in the words of the Senate president, that the president has given him uh, good explanation and the details of some of this uh, information on how the monies, will, where the monies will go, how it will be spent, and all of that. And they trust what is going to be. Uh, Jide, I wonder what your uh, mind is on this. Borrowing is harmless mm. if the funds borrowed are judiciously oh, there's condition applied. If. Exactly. Okay. And given the case of Nigeria, we have operated like a prodigal nation over the years. Mm -hmm. We have borrowed so much. As at now, I think our indebtedness is the region of about 25.7 trillion naira. And if we have borrowed that much with internal generated revenue, you expect that the nation should be you know, on top of the hill in terms of development, mm -hmm. yet we are still the capital of poverty. Now, let's come back to what should have been considered. Right now, the National Assembly is probing the non-remittance of about 20 uh, trillion naira stamp duty. And the proposed budget for 2020 is just a bit above 10 trillion naira. <laughs> so you imagine that if we have brought in the stamp duties as required, the we, we should, one I mean, we should, we should have mm. a, a budget. Alleged, exactly. Alleged. Uh, Alleged. <laughs> you know, so now that is on one side. In April 2019, the IMF warned us to cancel the subsidy. Mm. I mean, in this great country, we spent 11 trillion naira on full subsidy in six years, and yet we have four refineries. All right. We lose about $400 billion to uh, foreign havens. We can go on and on. Mm. Oil thefts, different. So I think this is a prodigal <laughs> governance system. <laughs> and I owe nobody any apology. Right. This country is too blessed to be where it is. And I keep asking this question. Go and check the mandate of the Mini Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. You'll be amazed that Nigeria has been shortchanged. Nigeria has been mismanaged. And we say it boldly and openly. And I throw this challenge again all as right. I drop my button here. That can we deliver this country with all the resources to a Canadian government, for instance, mm. and check out the results in one year? By their fruits, you know them. Okay. Nigeria has suffered from misadministration for too long. And that is the main, so a lot of people have said that is the main issue with Nigeria. Now, Dari, when it comes to... Like, like Jide puts it, Nigeria is too blessed. Well, that, in fact, that has become a cliche now, where everyone talks about the <laughs> blessing. Nigeria is a land flowing with milk and honey, which is true and all of that. But how would Nigerians, how would that translate, that potential, how would it translate to the prosperity of Nigerians? Now, when it comes to handling this headlong, every government, even right from the days of military, comes on board and says, we have seen something that is wrong and we are here to correct it. And they've been correcting since that time, since the first military coup in 1966, mm -hmm. up until now. Every extra administration has been correcting, but we're still where we are. Uh, we're where we are because uh, we actually need to look at uh, what you said as we got made cliche. Mm -hmm. uh, are being blessed, mm -hmm. so blessed, too blessed to uh, be poor. Mm -hmm. But I, I usually find that. Uh, uh, difficult to just swallow in the sense that for a blessing to translate into a prosperity it has to be all encompassing we are blessed with resources but are we really blessed with men <laughs> and women with the capacity truthfulness and patriotism to translate these resources into wealth for us wealth that will be collective not wealth that will go into wealth. private mm. pockets. Our patrimony, are they really common? Can we conveniently say it belongs to all of us, as in all of us? This is why we cannot but always find ourselves in this situation. And talking about borrowing, even private businesses have to borrow when the need uh, arises. 
But when they borrow, the ledgers are operated in such a way that provisions are made for repayment. Provisions are made for proper use of these borrowed funds. Provisions are made to ensure that at the end of the day, the best uh, results, results mm. are, was, achieved. Uh, yeah. are achieved. Yeah. Yeah. But when we borrow just for the immediate, you see, what I have noticed over time is that we look at the immediate and we just take the decision that we have to borrow. It should be all of compassion. We consider where we are coming from. How much are we holding as we speak? Mm. Should we borrow today? How will it affect our future? This should be what we should the, consider. The Minister of Finance said that uh, we, some of the monies we're paying back now, which mm. about two, uh, roughly two uh, uh, trillion naira goes into, there are monies that have been borrowed 30, 40 years ago. And but there was a time, there was a time, there was a time in this country when we almost celebrated paying off all our debts. Yes. That's the, uh, surprisingly, mm. during the regime of uh, Lucia, former, former President, President Lucia Lucia Right. So if we didn't pay it all, we almost finished paying. And then at the point, up to now, we are getting some refund from some uh, uh, debts we overpaid. Mm. The Paris fund, mm. uh, Paris refund. Mm. And so, if we got to a point where we could pay up okay. and even we are not getting refunds, we should think in that. I'm not saying we shouldn't borrow when we need it, mm. but we should not rely solely on the fact that we just have to keep borrowing. Okay. It will hurt our future. And when we borrow and we are yet to see the fruits mm. of the one we have borrowed, okay. we should be very, very considerate in thinking about borrowing more. All right. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about involving the private sector. We have to, we have to end it here now. Uh, a lot to talk about, I must say. Yeah, but, really, Dari, really thank you so much for coming. And, Jide, thank you very much for coming as well. God bless. Thank, thank you. you to the papers now to see what the headlines are this morning. And I have with me in the studio Gide Ologun as well as uh, Dari Odufo Wokon. Gentlemen, nice to see you uh, with us in the studio. Thank now you. let's uh, start with Daily Trust. This morning says uh, 20, on 2023, uh, I'll stop desperate politicians. Uh, President Buhari is quoted as saying this. Uh, what president should do to succeed? Experts are preferring solutions here. Oh, I said this would interest my guests to talk about. Now, Blueprint newspaper is the next, and Buhari announces fresh three-year borrowing plan, signs 2020 budget on 77th birthday, orders MDAs on strict implementation, and warns against uh, name-dropping ahead 2023. Okay, that's the Blueprint. Daily Times is where we go now. Senate kicks against Buhari's directive on free visa for Africans someone's minister of uh, interior immigration boss asks agf to forward all treaties agreements uh, it entered into by federal government to national assembly for ratification and from there news direct now is next and he says federal government prepares policies for two oil bid rounds in 2020. Uh, okay uh, from there this day newspaper now says uh, business leaders upbeat about better economy as buhari signs 2020 birthday budget and President preaches patience, patriotism at 77 and pledges free, fair, credible 2023 polls. And APC uh, governors of Bajabia Mila Tinubu greet celebrator or celebrant. <laughs> okay. Now this, this day, that's what it says. The Guardian is where we go next. Article warns against borrowing as Buhari signs 10.594 trillion naira budget. And uh, will deliver promises to Nigerians' president's vows. An organized private sector urges caution over execution. And condemnation trails 37 billion naira renovation vote for Asso Rock. Okay, that's what uh, The Guardian has. Daily Sun is the next paper now. And uh, it, it says reps reject a six-year single term for president and governors. As senators oppose free visa directive and summon a minister. Okay, that's what the Daily Sun has. The Vanguard is the next paper now. Vanguard is on show right, this morning, and it says, Court summons Justice Minister, a DSS boss. Malami risking removal as uh, AGF, that is saying, it is said by Femi Falano, is quoted as saying this. Femi Falano is the uh, lead counsel for Shore at the case going on. Okay, gentlemen, 
2023, there has been lots of comments from politicians and a lot of Nigerians regarding 2023, which is still about four years away. Uh, 2023, a lot of people say it's too early to, to talk about 2023 politics now, uh, because that's the next general election. But the Daily Trust this morning says, uh, I'll stop desperate politicians <coughs> Uh, from using my name. In fact, uh, the Sun newspaper has it somewhere, saying I won't allow my name to be used for 2023 campaigns. Uh, you see that coming from the president. Uh, Gide, I wonder what uh, this means to you here. I, I don't think the president should be concerned about the use of his name. Why He's not? not seeking a third term. His name remains his name. As, I, I mean, he's not even seeking a third term. Okay. He's not going to contest in 2020. He doesn't even have the right so, to. So politicians may not need mm. to attach his name. I think the only area he can be of support is to deliver on good governance. And some politicians can leverage on that. And uh, talking about the fact that the focus is on 2023, <coughs> it reminds me of a popular saying that the politicians think of the next election mm the statement thinks of the next generation. So I would advise my president to focus on primary issues now. As we sit in this lovely studio, I know that the inflation rate in my country has risen to the highest mm. in the last 19 months. It's about 11.8. Talk about five, food, yes. talk mm. about you know, basic needs of life. I know that we have a huge crisis in the infrastructure sector of the economy. I know that the taxes are rising, uh, people are disenchanted, there is hardship in the land, the unemployment rate stands at about 25.7, and we have the need for cohesion as a people. We have a, a, you know, an unprecedented, difficult uh, terrain in terms of insecurity. Right. So, I so think the president, the should, the focus president should focus on right. this and let 2023. Take care Just of itself. Come in, take care of itself. <laughs> you, do good, you know, government is about governance. Okay. And it's about enhancing the fortunes of the people and creating an enabling environment. All right, Dari, can 2023 take care of itself in true terms? From the way we, uh, the, from our history and the kind of people Nigerians are and all of that, uh, someone would say, well, we have to start planning from now because uh, it's, it's investment for a lot of politicians. But if the president <laughs> says, I wouldn't like my name to be used for the next campaigns. What do you make here? To, to, to first answer your question, 2019 didn't take care of itself. Okay. So <laughs> some it people took care of, of it. By some people. So <laughs> 2023 will not take care of itself. That's right. And then, insofar, we have chosen to practice democracy. Mm. It sim simply means we have decided to play politics. All right. So politics is the business of those who want to go into governance. And then every day to a politician is an election day. Every day is part of his plan for that very next election. So 2023 being discussed now, it's just natural. Yeah, the, we had an election, it's gone. Everybody is aware that in four years time, there will be an election. So it's even good for our democracy. Okay. So if you are the type who enjoys citizenship, the fact that people are already talking about when you will have to leave <laughs> will keep reminding you of the inevitable. So I have no problem with people discussing 2023. Mm. Then when I saw that headline, I was worried. Why? I'm Why were very you worried. In uh, 2023, I'll stop desperate politicians. Mm. I was so worried that I had to look for the paper. When I read through it, I realized that uh, uh, it's, it's just sensationalism. Okay. What the president said for the poor, I mean, for the purpose of those, for the benefit of those who may not bother to read the story, mm. is that it will stop desperate politicians from using his name, mm. especially from dropping his name to enhance their chances at uh, winning elections. Well, if they want to use his name and they are desperate, maybe he, he, he's speaking for himself. Because my worry is, Defining who a desperate politician exactly. is. Exactly. Mr. Uh, President and, and contested. And, and practically, how he's going to do that. Mr. President contested four times mm. before imagine president. If that is not desperation, it simply means it must be patriotism. <laughs> and it must be patriotism. So I want him to also see some other people uh, who are eager to govern and as also being patriotic. Okay. That is one. Two. Talking about people 
not using his name now, it will be difficult. Okay. He belongs to a political party. Hmm. And politicians who want to run for governor, assembly, state, and what have you in his party, will campaign with his name if he performs well. His performance will be one thing his fellow party men will rely on to sell their own candidacy. So it will be difficult. I think Mr. President needs to understand that he is a brand that, was, that no longer belongs to himself alone or his immediate family. A lot of people put in effort, resources, time into building the Buari brand way back from 2013, 2014. Now, he represents the, uh, the, his political party. He is a poster boy yeah. of those who shares so, in his so ideas. He, he, he can't so cut he them cannot off run now. away from the fact that <laughs> people will use his name. <laughs> okay. It is inevitable. All right. And I like guess the, president the best is that can be done now live with it. Okay. is to leave an yes. excellent performance profile. That, that people right. can that use that to campaign. Can leverage That's on fine. Positive. Governance is that, everything. That people yeah, can exactly. now use to campaign. All right. Dario Dufo, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Ajide Logun, thank you very much. God bless Nigeria.